Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Uh, doing some sound guy stuff in the shop today. How cool is that? So we've got about a 10 year old Avid SC48 uh, console that we love. Man, this thing's been great. It's performed well above expectations. It was a solid investment. Uh, no intent to sell it. We're gonna keep it. It's gonna keep on going. So, uh, replaced a couple of faders along the way. It's kind of the only moving parts. Um, there is a couple of fans in there, but they seem to hold up pretty well. So I purchased, we, we put a couple in, so ultimately we needed 22 new ones to freshen all the faders up. And they're kind of a cheap fader. They're a Alps. Um, I'll grab one for you. Bubby the shop cat. Everybody say hi. This is a, it's not a very good fader. It's an Alps, kind of a cheap motorized. Um, they had these originally in the Digi 01s from way back. Uh, so anyway, it's not like, it's not like a PM 5D fader or any of that that's, you know, those things are killer. Um, these are kind of cheap and I think they're, I think we paid $58 a piece from Full Compass, bought 22. So we're gonna put 22 in. Um, I thought about cleaning them, honestly. Uh, it probably takes 30 minutes a piece to clean these things. And, you know, kind of time is money in this job. So I, I opted to just do new ones because really I don't think we'd see the kind of life that we need to get out of them. Um, and we're in a pretty dirty environment a lot of the time. So anyway, went with brand new ones. Let's put them in. All right. So this is really a pretty simple procedure. It's right there. It takes a little uh, Torx bit to pop it all apart. And you'll want to have some kind of uh, little cup or something to put the screws in. So let me, there, easy enough. A little glass cleaner cup. We've uh, since moved on to an S6, S6L, which is a fantastic console. It's, uh, it's been a really a nice transition from this to that. Um, we didn't do the, the Digico thing. Um, we went straight from Yamaha to a couple of these. We didn't do a profile either. We uh, managed to skip that one as well. But we did do an S3 and an S6 recently this year and super happy kind of glad we waited it's been uh, really worthwhile for us so we'll see how that goes over time <laughs> if it holds up as good as this has it'll be amazing it's always uh, in live sound a console can be a huge mistake so you got to be super careful what you buy make sure it's on everybody's rider and it uh, you're gonna make people happy with it because it's a big investment and if you do the wrong thing, you're not gonna get your money back out of it. If uh, you end up being a turd, you're just gonna, you're just gonna bathe in it, basically. So, important to, to make a good choice. We usually uh, wait around a little bit until the dust settles and then we'll, we'll jump in with something everybody's excited about. We're a little, yeah, maybe a little hasty on the S6. We'll we'll see. Um, I do appreciate the technology behind it, and I appreciate the uh, what they've done as far as uh, audio transmission and the 
the tech that makes the thing go. The nice thing about these desks is it's all the same faders. The, uh, the other encoders, um, the mushroom head guys, those have all been really solid. A couple of the switches might be a little, I think maybe one or two of these aren't really awesome, but they still work good enough. So Rob's just gonna stick with that. Let me find a tool to get these out quick. So basically, pop all the little fader screws out. That's easy enough. Like I said, it's pretty simple, but you know, sometimes you be a little nervous to crack into something like this, but maybe if you watch this video, you won't uh, be afraid to jump in. That's my goal. You know, it'd uh, be a shame to see these things not not keep going. They, uh, they're a brilliant piece of technology. And I think it's got another five years left in it. You know, we'll see. It, uh, I think it definitely has an end of life date where they, they won't do any further updates, which we will probably be coming up on that. And then I think once we get to there, yeah, maybe a couple more years and that'll be, that'll be that. Um, everybody will have fresh new plugins that they, they want to use and this won't run them. So that'll be the end of it. But uh, in the meantime, I think it's worth the, the time and the money to Freshen this one up. Like I said, we bought it brand new and I try to take really good care of my stuff so I get a good life out of it. And hopefully this will be the, the cat's meow. You know, you think of tedious things to work on. I have a DJI Mavic Pro and I was flying it in the house one day. It seemed like a good thing to do at the time. But I uh, ended up crashing it into the refrigerator and I broke the ribbon cable on the gimbal uh, right to the sensor head on it. And wow, that thing is tedious, itty bitty, teeny tiny little stuff. A uh, couple hours of watching YouTube and all that to, to make that go. And man, I don't think I'd do it again. I think I'd send it in and get it done, which they... Uh, I think for a time there, they, they were doing it no charge because it was kind of a common fail point on them. Um, you know, the part was cheap, but man, tedious, teeny tiny little thing. But, uh, I do a fair amount of repair stuff around the shop. Um, nothing really component level for the most part. We'll do, you know, swap in a card or replace a power supply. You know, we do speaker reconing. Um, that's easy enough. Maybe I'll cut a video on that at some point. Definitely a technique to it. Um, but once you got it, you got it. And it's easy enough to do. So there you go. I have yet another little audio device that I may incorporate in this. All right. Let's see if that works better. A little, a little better audio for you folks here. There. Now I can <laughs> I can pander at will, and hopefully you guys can hear me better. I'm kind of a soft-spoken fella, so. Anyway, if uh, any of you up-and-coming sound guys in the world would uh, enjoy this video or it's useful to you, please leave a comment and yeah, don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell, as they say. Good reason for that in the YouTube world these days. As a sound guy, I think there's really no excuse for bad sound in your video. I don't think I'm going to get away with that. So do what we can. Try not to spend too much money on this stuff either, but do what we can. Yeah, if you've got a 
console you've overhauled or a favorite that you like, you know, leave a comment. It's fun. I'll try to uh, respond to a bunch of them anyway. The main thing I loved about this desk when we made the move, I was running a PM5D, um, and I went from analog to the PM5D, and the thing the PM5D was, was missing was proper subgroups. And by proper, I mean proper. Um, boom, groups, there they are. Uh, Yamaha didn't do that. Uh, my PM4000 had it. My PM1800 had them. Um, I don't know how they managed to, to jump into digital and not include that. That was a big part of my workflow and still is. So I think I ran a 5D for well, probably six or seven years before this. And man, it took forever to get, get back to where I was in analog. And I don't know that I ever really got there. Um, you know, admittedly, this was a kind of a step backwards sonically, even from the 5D. Uh, 5D was a great desk, but it just lacked the, the one thing. So anyway, there you go. All right. So I've been in this thing a couple times, so I know that there is a, a ribbon cable right in here. I'm going to have to get unplugged straight away. That's the last one I missed, yep. All right. Okay, let me grab this up and show you. It is this ribbon right here. The one right on the end. You gotta undo that one. No big deal. Just something you gotta do when you fire into one of these. And that, didn't I? There we go. But easy enough. You just uh, unhook the little keepers and out it comes. And then I don't think there was any other loose ones beyond that. Let's take a look. All right. Everybody's good. All right, so the rest of them aren't too tight, so we're good to go. Okay, let me pause this for a second and grab a couple of tools and a whole bunch of faders. I'll be right back. That's a whole bunch of faders. All right, so what we're looking at here is the fader control boards. Um, and we gotta flip those back to get all the faders slid out of here, so that'll be the next step. And it's a whole bunch of Phillips screws. It's kind of like a nice filleting. <laughs> so unfortunately, we've gotta undo all this to get this intermediate plate out of here. But that's just how it is. And I'm noticing there is just a little bit of fine, I'm assuming to be aluminum off of these circuit boards that's thrown around as the uh, lock washer is releasing. It's shaving a little off of there. So I want to make sure we go through and blow all that out before we fully assemble and test. Easy enough, a little air, just kick it out of there. Won't be a big deal. Well, I caught myself. I was mouth breathing. <laughs> Nobody likes a mouth breather. All right, so should just be able to flip these down. Yes, yeah, so we have one more ribbon to pull. Kick this fella out of here. And we gotta pull this plate. And that takes the same screws as the fader control boards so they can land in the same cup. All right, 
can't be that. Faders, lots and lots of faders. So all the green stripes are the ones we have not replaced. So it looks like I'm gonna need 22, just as we suspected. All right, more tools. All right, so I'm gonna do these one at a time, just to be kind of sure that I get them back in the right hole. Well, that's the hard part done. Uh, we still gotta blow this out and then we'll be ready to put it back together. Thanks for watching, always. If you uh, enjoy what we're doing here, if it helps you, please like and subscribe. It'll help us continue to do what we do. Thanks and have a great day.